Hey friends, we have done this screen in a couple of different styles, so here is another version, this time in Neue Brutalism. And if you haven't watched the Neue Brutalism video, watch that first before you go explore this style with this tutorial. Ready? Let's go! I'm doing this in Figma, but you can use any software you want, so you can use Adobe XD or you can use Sketch. And I started by the main frame, which is 1600 by 1200, which is a nice dribble size. And then I'm gonna add another frame the size of a typical iPhone screen. But you can choose any screen size that you want. I'm gonna start by adding a stroke to the screen and changing the thickness to 4. Then let's round the corners a little bit. So 24 for starters, we might tweak it later. The photos on the right are for your profile picture, for the three users that we're showing and for the one article. Let's create a header. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle. For now let's not worry about the height too much. And then I'm gonna change the color fill to a linear fill and then pick a gradient. And we previously had a gradient that was kind of purple bluish. So in this case, I'm gonna go with a similar style. Of course, this style also works really well with solid colors, but I'm gonna go with a gradient to keep some level of consistency between all of those examples. And of course, I'm gonna make it diagonal with the color that appears lighter to be on the top. We're not gonna be playing around with masking here, let's do it the quick and dirty way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this a little bit down and then I'm gonna move it back up in a way that we can still see the entire border on the top. And then I'm gonna move it to the left and right so we can see the borders on each side. Now what we want to do is to round just the top two corners. So just the top two. You can press enter and then select both of them and then write in a number. And once you're moving the number with your up arrow or down arrow, you're gonna see when it fits. So this value here is perfect. Okay, now let's write the app name, which is called Square Planet, and I'm gonna go with a more funky font here. So first of all, I'm gonna place it on the top, and yeah, this font doesn't really fit that style. So I'm gonna go with Recoleta, but you can choose any kind of font as long as it's still pretty readable, but also a little bit more funky or weird. I'm also gonna add a shadow to this font, and typically with the shadow settings, we go with the blur being double of the Y value, but in here we actually go and go with half. Okay, now let's place this a little bit higher to the top. Of course, there is a space for the notch above that. Now let's drag in the profile picture. So I'm gonna move it onto the canvas and make sure that it's above all of the other layers. And just like that, let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go with 44 by 44 because this has to be still big enough for like an easy access or easy tapping. And I'm gonna round the corners a little bit, but 20 is definitely too much. So I'm gonna go with 12 here. This style allows you to actually play around with things and not everything has to be completely consistent, but just make sure that it looks good together. And now I'm gonna align the text to the inside of that smaller rectangle. So it's gonna be 32 points from the left side and then the photo is going to be 32 points from the right side. And I'm aligning it to the purple gradient one, so not to the actual phone. Okay, now let's add a shadow to this, but in this case we're going to move the blur value down to zero and then the X and the Y value are going to be the same. We can keep it at two for now. Now with the blur value being zero and X and Y being two, let's change the opacity of the shadow to 100%. And as you can see, we're already having that 3D look that this style is known for. But we don't really want it to be fully black, so pick a color from the photo, and in this case it's gonna be like a dark purple. That will make those colors basically work better together. Now let's add a subtitle here, so it's just gonna say hello miho. And I'm gonna change the font here, because we don't want the entire app to be done in a funky font. The title is enough. And I'm gonna change the font here to plus Jakarta Suns and of course move it a little bit to the top. And I'm gonna lock the phone layer for now because it's just the background. Okay, now let's make this font a little bit less visible, a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. And I'm here just gonna eye it so it doesn't really matter. It's not supposed to be super precise in that style. It's more about fun exploration in this video. Now let's create a search bar that's gonna be overlapping our top bar. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and make sure that it's 32 points from every side of that purple gradient rectangle. Now let's change the height of it to about 50 because we don't want it to be too tall and then place it exactly in the center. Now I'm gonna round the corners and you can round yours however much you like. I'm just gonna go with 8. Then I'm gonna change the fill color to white and I'm gonna add a stroke, but this time the stroke is not gonna be as thick as the phone because the phone itself is like the background layer, so obviously it has a thicker stroke. 
I'm gonna leave the stroke here at 2. The most popular effect in this style is a diagonal hard drop shadow. So I'm just gonna add a drop shadow and as before I'm gonna change the X and Y value to be the same. Blur equals 0 and then the opacity is 100. And with just two points it just looks pretty good. It fits the actual border radius so I'm gonna stick with this. Now let's add a placeholder to the middle of our field. I'm gonna write what are you looking for but you can just write search if you prefer. And I'm gonna make it smaller. Now place it in the center, vertically obviously, and for now don't push it towards any of the sides because we're gonna add an icon to the left side. But just make sure that it's actually in the vertical center. So I'm just gonna create two 16 squares and as you can see that font is not exactly in the center. You might make it one point smaller or one point larger to actually fit it. I'm gonna leave it for now but you should actually look at things like that in projects that are portfolio projects. Let's create our search icon. So I'm gonna start with a circle and I want it to be aligned the right way. So at least 10 points from every side. Now let's pick a color for it and I'm gonna go with red. But please don't choose a red that's very saturated. Somewhere around here is pretty good. If you go here it's gonna be too saturated. If you go here it's gonna be too pastel. So we want something that's visible. Probably somewhere in this area here. But yeah I'm gonna go with something that still has a little bit of punch in it. It can be a tiny bit more orange, like whatever you want. It can be a different color too, but just don't go too saturated. And now let's add a stroke to it and add the same effects that we did before. We can start with stroke of one and then the same drop shadow. Now you can bring the text closer to the icon and however close you wish. If you're using an eight point grid, then you can go with eight or 16. And I'm gonna go with like an italic font here a tiny bit brighter so for that I'm gonna pick the background color and then both the saturated and make it a tiny bit darker. So a version of that dark purple but with a little bit less saturation and yeah it's darker. So it fits the style of the app a little bit more. Now just to quickly make sure that the alignment on the right side is optically the same. So I'm just gonna move the icon here and as you can see it's exactly the same. So perfect. Now let's create a search icon which is pretty easy because you just create an oval and add a stroke to it and remove the fill. So just like that. And then using the pen tool, create a diagonal line holding the shift key, just like that. And then you can group this entire object, change its color and have a nice looking icon. I'm gonna make mine a little bit thicker and I'm gonna change the color to white. Okay, now let's create the two titles for the two sections underneath that. So I'm just gonna copy the text from inside the form field and of course it's not gonna be italics and I'm gonna call it designers and we're also gonna need one that says articles. We already have the good shadows in place so I'm just gonna duplicate that form field and place it below. But first let's align it a little bit. So starting from not the shadow but the actual border, make sure that it's about 32 points. It doesn't have to be super precise. If it's optically kinda good, it's fine. We're having fun here after all. And then for the bottom part use a smaller square, so 16 by 16 to show clearly that the designer's label belongs to the element underneath that and not to the one above. Okay, now let's create our cards. So I'm just gonna go with any number that I want, but what we want is one of the cards to overlap the phone frame. So I want to fit around two and a half or two and a quarter frames within the phone. So pick the width of them based on that. And I'm gonna increase the shadow so they are more prominent, so they're more to the front. And I want the distance between them to be 16 as well. So just like that we have two cards that are within the frame and one is overlapping in a like nice dribble kind of way. I'm gonna speed up this part because you can do it any way you want. So I'm just gonna drag the photos and the descriptions to the actual new frames that we created and you need to play around with cropping the photos the right way and also rounding their corners on the top or you can create a mask, you can do it however you want. Once we got that done, let's copy the text from the label, paste it inside our new little rectangles and then write the names of the people and then using a much smaller font and lighter font, write their job title. And now I'm gonna use the 16 by 16 square to set the padding on the top and on the bottom from the baseline. So as you can see, the cards are a little bit too tall. I'm just gonna shrink them, but make sure to shrink them to the inside of the border like this. Okay, now we can remove or move away that little square and we have our cards done. 
Now that we have more elements in, you can start tweaking the fonts a little bit so you can make them bolder, lighter, a little bit smaller, change the distances a little bit. Just play around to see what feels right, because this style is all about experimentation. Once you have something you like, let's copy that little search bar again and let's create the article. So I'm just gonna place it in the right spot, I'm gonna set some height, it doesn't really matter what height it is right now. Just make sure that it's at the right distance, so it should be in my case 36 from the actual phone. Okay, I'm gonna make this taller and I don't want to use the exact same effect, so we don't really want to have that exact same shadow underneath because for articles we can try something different. So I'm gonna go with a virtual stack of like uh, 2D low fidelity paper here. For that, I'm gonna remove the shadow effect completely, just leave the border, the outline, and I'm gonna make this little rectangle a little bit smaller on the right side. So as you can see, the distance from the right side is a little bit larger. Now I'm gonna duplicate it three times, so I have a stack of three cards. And this could be it, if you prefer this uh, sort of size of it, but you can play around with different directions and different distances. So I'm just gonna shrink this a little bit, and one thing that we want to do here is once we actually place it at the right position, I'm going to go with like four points between each card. So they're very closely stacked together. And once you get the right proportion, then you can enlarge this whole stack a little bit. But as you can see here, those uh, corner radiuses don't really fit each other. So we're going to go to the card that's in the middle and we're going to change the corner radius a little bit. So now it's connected visually optically to the one above it and then the other one as well and yeah now they fit just remember to change only this one corner okay now i paste it in the name and the job title from the cards above and i'm gonna change this name to the title of the actual content so the title of the article and then the subtitle is gonna be like a little preview or something go with just one line of text and then i'm gonna move it down a little bit and we already have the article cover so you can pick any article from the web that you want to place here and i picked this cover because it actually is in the same style so it's gonna fit it nicely so just make sure to align it the same way that we did before tweak it a little bit until it actually is in the right place and in the right size one thing to remember is that if your image has some dark borders on it actually that you don't really want those borders to be next to the border of the frame so i'm just gonna cut it out in this spot and then just cut a little bit out on the right side so it's filled better and don't forget about rounding the top two corners of the image as well. So just uh, press enter, select the top two corners and then pick the roundness. And of course, pick the roundness that matches the actual border roundness. Okay, now let's add a read more button. And for that, once again, I'm just gonna copy and paste our form field to the bottom. I picked a color for the button that's actually matching a little bit the style of the main app. So the top header, and what we want to try here is something a little bit different because we do have that black border and that black shadow and this is fine you can use the button exactly like that but we can still experiment with this so what i'm gonna do is for the shadow i'm gonna pick the same color that's in the button increase the depth a little bit so from two to four and then what we're gonna do is to decrease the brightness of the shadow so go to the b value and then just drag it down a little bit so you have a shadow that's in the right color but it's a little bit darker. And then you can pick the border color to be the same color as the shadow. And as you can see, we still have that 3D effect, but it's not as strong anymore. So you can experiment with this way as well. Now add a label to your button and make it big enough so it's readable and visible and also a little bit bolder. So I'm gonna go with 16 and bold, place it exactly in the center and you can use the red square method to measure if it's exactly in the center and then you can modify a couple of more elements on this screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also change the clickable search icon. So the one with the red background. I'm gonna change the shadow and the border to a different shade of red, so a darker shade of that same red. So the same way that we've done before, just pick the same color and then decrease the brightness value. Now that we have all content in place, you can actually go to the phone, the one in the background, and then modify the roundness of its corners. If you want it to better fit the actual roundness of the buttons and the cards and everything. I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit so it matches the thing that I'm going for here. 
and of course make sure that the button is at the same distance from the bottom left and right so in my case it's 36 points another thing that we can do here is to use the rule that things that are brighter are supposedly looking closer to you so we left the input field and the cards and the article card white and then for the background of the phone i'm gonna pick a very light yellow now i'm gonna duplicate that search button and use it for decoration so what we want to do is have a thicker border i'm gonna go with six for now okay maybe that's too much four and then i want also a bigger shadow so let's play with some values to see what feels right and yeah i think eight is quite good maybe six even yeah, something like this. And now duplicate this multiple times at multiple sizes, have some of them overlap, have some of them be under the phone. And just like that, we have a Noia Brutalism version of our app. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, this style doesn't fit every possible scenario. So it's not something that you should use for every possible project that you're working on, but it's definitely good to explore it a little bit and to play around with it and have fun. So as usual, thanks for watching. Don't forget about subscribing and most of all, have a beautiful day. Cheers. Ah, ah, ah.